This is the uh, fourth example problem in our uh, conservation of energy examples. For this one, we have an interesting situation. I I'm still sliding something down a ramp, although in this case the ramp is curved. But I also have added over here a spring. So the situation is I have a mass that's going to fall down a, or not fall down, slide down a frictionless ramp. Uh, eventually end up here, right, with some sort of velocity here. And then compress the spring. Ultimately, is this mass is going to end up here with the spring compressed and come to rest. So it's going to slide down the ramp, have some velocity here, uh, compress the spring, and come to rest. All right, so what we're going to ask are things like, okay, well, what is the velocity here, and how far did the spring compress before this thing stopped? So just to remind ourselves of what we have, we have the definition of kinetic energy as one half mv squared. We have gravitational potential energy as mg delta y, although we're gonna probably use h here. And we have spring potential energy as one half k delta x squared, although we will probably just use an x squared here. We're going to use probably an h because I'm going to set, well, here, we'll get there when I'm talking about it. So that's the situation. Now, how do I do this? Well, let's set the zero point for gravitational potential energy right here. If I do that, notice that the final y position of this object is zero. Uh, the initial y position is h, and so what I'm going to get out of gravitational potential is mgh. For the spring, I'm going to set the zero point, where I always set it for a spring, at the uncompressed location. Right? The uncompressed spring has certain length, and I can pick out the, the beginning of that spring, or the, the front part of that spring, and call that, when it's resting, and call that zero. Therefore, when I stretch it, I get a final position, uh, minus zero, so that just comes in to be x final squared, which is what I'm going to use when I put these expressions into my equation. All right, so kinetic initial plus potential initial plus work due to non-conservative forces is equal to kinetic final plus potential final. So the same equation I've been using um, when I unpack the potential energy now, though, I could conceivably have two terms. Before, in the examples, I've had one term, which was gravitational potential. I've got two types of potential energy here, so I'm going to have to be careful with that. Um, but let's see what I can get rid of. So work due to non-conservative forces is my first inspection. I don't have friction, and there's no air resistance. So I don't, and there's no, you know, there's nothing accelerating this thing like a string or a rocket boost or something. It's only gravity. So if that's the case, I've got no work done due to non-conservative forces. So as far as what is initial and final, I've got to now be careful because I've got two two different positions and two different scenarios. So let's at the let's for the first look at my at the at the position here. We'll call this uh, problem number one. That is, what is the speed? of this object after it exits the ramp. To do that, I'm going to uh, figure out if I can get rid of anything else. So I, I haven't even touched the spring here, right? The spring is uncompressed because there's nothing. If I'm at this position, I haven't even messed with the spring. So maybe we can all agree that there is no spring potential energy yet, or you know, it's zero. The spring hasn't been touched. It's still at its uncompressed length. And so at this point, I have no spring potential energy. At this point, because I've called my zero point, my origin right here, I have no gravitational potential energy. So this number one, this situation here, is what in the first part of my problem I'm going to be calling final. I stop caring about the system right here. I'm going to care about the rest of it later. But here, this is my final potential energy, which is nothing. I'm starting from rest, so my initial kinetic energy is zero, right? Initial speed is zero, which means initial kinetic energy is zero. So it just remains to unpack what I have. 
initial potential again i don't have any spring as i'm up here i haven't even gotten to the spring yet so the only thing the only option i have is gravitational potential energy and i've already figured out that that's mgh and that's equal to my final kinetic energy which is one half m v final squared okay masses are going to go away and uh, run through the algebra, I'm going to get V final is equal to root 2GH. Now, this should be starting to look familiar. This is actually the same speed I would get if I dropped this off of a cliff. Of high so if I turn around and I drop this mass off the other side, right before it hits the ground, it's going root 2GH. That's really interesting. Of course, if this is frictionless and there's no air resistance, the only thing doing work on this is gravity. And it's, the gravity is always up and down, and so the gravity that I'm worried about is the component that is up and down. That changes as I go along the ramp, but it turns out not to matter. Over here, no air resistance, no friction. The only thing acting on this, doing work on it, is gravity. It's not surprising that I get, or at least in, if you think about it, it's not surprising that you get the same result for the speed here that you would if you just dropped it off the cliff. Now, in the real life, of course, we have friction, and so it'll be somewhat less than that. But uh, for this one, it, it get the exact same answer, and that maybe makes some sense. So for number one, that's my answer. Now, number two, I'm going to ask, what is the compression distance of the spring as this thing comes to rest? So for the second part of the problem, I'm just going to look at the latter part. So for number one, my final velocity was here. But if I only look, if I only care about this last part of the motion, well, that's now where I start. So what was my final velocity is going to become my initial velocity, right? So for number two, my initial velocity is now root two gh. My final velocity, well, I'm just coming to rest, so that's zero. So let me write down the same equation: initial kinetic plus initial potential plus work due to non-conservative forces is equal to final kinetic plus final initial. Again, I have no friction acting here, so the work due to non-conservative forces just goes away. Now let's think about this. At this position, just like I have argued well ago at this position, I haven't touched the spring yet, so I have no spring potential energy. I, I'm gonna still set my gravitational uh, zero here, so since this thing is now moving horizontally, it's not moving up or down, there's no change in gravitational potential energy. So even if you don't set your zero point here, it doesn't change. So the gravitational potential energy contributes nothing. But I do have kinetic energy, right? I'm moving at a one half m v initial squared. Now v initial, I know what it is. I'll make the substitution in a second. Let's look on the other side of the equation. When it comes to rest, my final kinetic energy is zero because I have a velocity of zero. And I have potential energy. Is it gravitational? No. It is spring potential energy because as I compress that spring, this mass is doing work on the spring. That is, it's putting energy into the spring. That energy appears as potential spring energy. So I can say that my initial kinetic now is equal to one half k x squared. I'm I'm assuming that I'm starting this journey at the zero position, which I am. Nothing's hitting the spring, and then this thing barrels into it. So the spring is unstretched, uncompressed. Then it's no, in other words, it's at zero. So then this thing comes in and compresses it. So this is going to be actually my x final, if I want to be really really strict with it. X final squared. X initial zero. So it, I can just leave it off. Okay. All right. Well. I can get rid of my one halves. I can't get rid of my masses because I've got, I don't have a mass over here, so I've got to keep that. Uh, but it looks like if I solve this for x final, I'm going to get m over k, the initial squared, and all that is under a radical, which let me, re let me write it like this, root m over k, where k is, remember, my spring constant, um, the initial, just took the square root. And all I'm worried about is uh, is the distance here. So I don't have to worry about the negative root of this. Or sorry, negative root of this. It's going to take the positive one. And finally, I can make that substitution here to get everything in terms of what I, I know. 
root m over k times root 2gh, which is my initial velocity. So for number two, um, yeah, this is my final displacement, right, all the way back over here. This is x final. This is the final position of the spring as it's become compressed. So let's just conceptually run through what we did. At the beginning, I had energy in the form of gravitational potential energy. As I let this thing slide down the ramp, that gravitational potential energy uh, turns into kinetic energy until the point I'm at the bottom. All of my initial gravitational potential energy has now turned itself into kinetic energy. And this has kinetic energy moving into the spring. As I go into the spring, the kinetic energy of this, of this mass turns itself into spring potential and stores itself in the spring. So, so I should say spring potential energy. So the energy content is the same. It's, it's the same because I have no work due to non-conservative forces, right? No energy is leaving my system. My system here is the mass, the ramp, and the spring. No energy is leaving my system. It's just moving itself around. Potential, gravitational potential to kinetic, then kinetic into spring potential. Now, if I let the system develop, the, the mass comes in and comes to a stop, if I don't do anything, what's gonna happen? The spring is now exerting a force on the mass. It's gonna do work on the mass. It's gonna accelerate it back this way. It's gonna go up the ramp. And we're gonna find that the exact same thing happens. The, the spring potential energy uh, converts into kinetic energy of the mass. As it starts to go up the ramp, that kinetic energy then gets converted back into gravitational potential energy. And if I don't have any friction, if nothing takes energy out of this system, it's going to sit here and do this forever, right? If I don't lose any energy in the spring and no energy to friction, this thing is going to go compress, come back up. It will come back up to the exact same spot because I'm requiring the energy to be the same. So if the energy at this point is mgh, if that's the same every time, it always gets back to h. And so I will have the situation of an oscillation, right? Come down, compress the spring, come up, stop, come down, compress the spring, come up, stop, on and on and on until the end of time. Of course, in real life, I'm going to get some friction, but we're going to see that in the next video.